Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. Today we go to Iowa City, Iowa, and that's where we catch up with former Hawkeye, two-time NCAA champ Brent Metcalf. More importantly today, I think, Dad Brent Metcalf. Brent, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. In the yard with the kids, you've got Cole there, the little two-year-old uh, Spitfire. Going to be two yeah. years old coming up, what, June 2nd? June 2nd, he'll be two, and he's a little hell on wheels, man. Yeah, well, literally on wheels. Show us his his object of desire. Here oh, yeah, I he... think he's he's changing a tire right now on his, uh, <laughs> on his monster truck. He's got a monster truck. Is there a name, yeah. is there a name for the monster truck? I don't know. It's a Dodge. It's got Mossy Oak camo. Okay, so. that, that works. Mossy Oak. We love the guys at Mossy Oak. Yeah. How many times <laughs> do we need to say Mossy Oak so you can get one more check? Oh, I don't get a whole lot of checks, but, you know, all the better, I suppose. <laughs> Mossy Oak. Good job. Uh, Brent Metcalf in the Nike hot seat today. Uh, camps are coming up. You've got four or five of them. How important is uh, passing on that information through camps to kids? How important is that to the makeup of who Brent Metcalf is? Um, I don't know about that. I just really enjoy it. I enjoy uh, reaching a wide variety of, of age groups, whether it be beginner kids or all the way up through high school. Um, so I enjoy that a ton. Um, I, I don't know if it's something where I feel a pull and a need to go give knowledge to them other than, um, it just, it feels good when you're there. You could tell that there's a lot of great energy that the kids are excited. Um, and that's fun for me. And I guess for me, the biggest thing is just passing on my passion, um, how much I love the sport, um, uh, maybe how intense I am about the sport, but also, you know, having fun with it. Um, and yeah, so. So that's the biggest thing is just pass on my passion to them um, and kind of how I believe the, the sport should be wrestled and done and what it's really all about. I remember our first interview, you were still in Davidson, Michigan, and it was a, it was a radio only interview, so we couldn't see you. But the more yeah. I've gotten to know you over the years, I told you once upon a time that I thought you would, were going to make a great dad and a great coach. Do you remember me saying that? Yeah, I, th I think I remember you saying that. Well, the rapid ascendancy. My point in bringing that up is you've had a rapid ascendancy in the sport. You, you, uh, Even as a, a competitor, you were coaching at Cedar Rapids Prairie, where you were there for a season, approximately five months. Then uh, four months at USA Wrestling, we thought that was it for you. We thought this was going to be a great home for you. Uh, but then you got the offer to, to uh, join Kevin Dresser's staff at, at Iowa mm -hmm. State. We haven't talked, I mean, we have talked, but we haven't done a full interview about the process. How did that all come down, uh, talking to Kevin Dresser and eventually accepting the position at Iowa State University? Oh, it was all kind of a whirlwind. Uh, to be honest with you, we had our, our car loaded up and we were headed out to Colorado to go find a place to live. We were leaving that Friday. And I think uh, through a mutual friend, he got in touch with me that like Thursday night or whatever it was um, and kind of laid an offer out there and said, hey, I want you to look at this. Um, and at the time, I just thought, hey, it's definitely worth me me going and, and seeing what this is all about. Um, it was a tough thing to do because I had made a commitment to USA Wrestling um, and I wanted to stand by that commitment. But ultimately, um, I decided this, this was going to be the best choice. Brett Metcalf, our guest, and, and we're talking with him about a lot of different things today. Camps, kids, uh, and commuting. Uh, one of the things that uh, a coach needs to do is to sell or rent out their current home and then make yep. the move and, and make the transition. You've been commuting uh, between Iowa City and Ames now approximately three days a week. That can get tiring. Yeah, it hasn't, it hasn't been too bad. It's been probably harder on my wife uh, because we do have three kids and that means I'm gone for at least six, seven hours a day, um, two hours there, two hours back, and two-hour practice, you know. Um, but it, it's been fine. It's been good. It's been, uh, it's been long as we're kind of getting to the, the last few minutes here because we are adding on to that, the packing and getting the house ready for renters to come in. And so there's just been a lot. And then also trying to keep the priority straight, which is the team, and making sure that those guys are getting what they need that they're prepared for the upcoming university nationals and then the uh, junior trials and then, you know, beyond. We're talking with Brent Metcalf. He was to be the USAW freestyle developmental coach, which I thought was a job that was uh, perfect, a perfect fit for you. 
mm-hmm. specifically with some of the kids that are that are coming up right now. As I've mentioned earlier, I've always thought you would be a great coach and a great teacher, uh, and perhaps that is your destiny. At least it appears to be. Um, you've got a challenge in that uh, Iowa State finished with one win last year, uh, mm-hmm. changing the 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 thought process understanding that it's not going to be easy and it's not going to be a whirlwind turnaround. Um, how do you attack that situation at Iowa State as, as uh, coaches? And um, what are the priorities? I think step one is just developing relationships. Uh, we can't come in. We can't just start burning the place down and demanding that these guys do this, this, and this. Uh, the biggest thing for us is developing relationships with these guys um, start to get them to buy into us and what we're about and that, that we do truly have uh, kind of the, their best interests in mind um, and then start to build and start to progress them um, in their training, technical, um, a lot of different areas. Uh, but I think the first thing is just trust, just building those rela- relationships because obviously um, you've got a staff that went out that they were tight with and then new guys just showing up. Um, so it's been good, though. It's, it's been really good, kind of the transition. The kids have seemed to be pretty open to it, um, and we're encouraged. There's a lot of talent in that room. Uh, the train has been going well, um, as well as you could hope, I guess. And, um, yeah, we're excited to, to continue to keep whacking away at this thing. So it's a cultural change, and have you have you been noticing small cultural changes? Um, I, I don't know if we've been noticing small cultural changes as it is um, us just trying to inject some changes, right? Okay, okay. And just inject some ideas and say, Hey, uh, let's think about it this way. Let's, let's do our nutrition this way. Let's how you sleeping, you know, uh, taking, I, you probably know, but more of a holistic approach to it other th- rather than just, um, you just, you, you go through it, you make weight, however you make weight and then you go and compete. Um, there's a right way to make weight. There's a, there's a right way to, you know, lean your body down, you know, a lot of different things. And that's just on, on one area of wrestling. But there's a lot of different things and areas that uh, I feel like will be kind of a work in progress as we go um, throughout the rest of this freestyle season. And then this summer, we're, it's going to be kind of an off time as far as diet goes. And we're going to have to just continue to sell them on on that uh, buying into just doing things right, putting themselves in position so that come October, November, um, you know, things are really clicking. I know, you know, in all your career, I don't know that I ever saw you puffy. It it always seemed, <laughs> it always seemed like you were you were just pounds away from uh, making weight on any given day, um, and and that's something you have to instill in these kids that it, it's a life journey, not not just a seasonal journey. Have you seen the kids buy into you know what you coaches are are uh, are you, what you're uh, trying to coach them or teach them? Yeah, I think so. I think um, Mike kind of said it best. When he said the first few days that we were in there, we had some guys kind of looking at us out of the corner of their eye, kind of suspicious on what we're all about. And now you certainly have eyes wide open. You have guys nodding their head, guys getting excited about kind of the message that you're giving them. Um, put all the technical stuff aside. Put all the, the rah-rah training stuff aside. And uh, just focus on getting these guys to, to buy in to what we're saying. And then they're making that their own. So it's really a heart and head, isn't it? I mean, it, you, establishing yourself as their coach, okay, one of their coaches anyway, you get into their head, but once they realize it and believe in it and then trust, then the the, the, the heart follows, correct? Sure. Then it's them. Then it's it's no longer what I'm saying to them. It's them, you know, th- their mind is, has been made up that this is what's best for them or, mm. you know, this is the way to train or to wrestle or whatever category you're going to hit there um, that, that they've bought in and convinced themselves that, that it's what they're about. And everyone's going to have a different version about it too. So it's not like there's, you know, one thing fits all. Um, there's different versions to, to each kid of what, what that means to them. And, um, and yeah. Do you, do you miss training at all? Because that's something you were always doing was training. Um, I don't, I'm not at a point right now where I look back and I say, man, I wish I was, I wish I was competing June 8th, 9th. I think those are the dates, right? Right. I wish I was competing. I'm not at that point. Um, I love wrestling. Uh, every chance I get, um, I am in the room and I, I try to, 
to jump in and wrestle. So I love that aspect of the training, right? Um, it's just it's just wrestling. Um, but no, I'm not at a point where I regret anything or I have having second thoughts or anything like that. You know, like I've said in the past. easier for me to just kind of jump in and, and wrestle on the way, I guess. We're talking with Brent Metcalf of the Nike Hot Seat today, a little over halfway to the goal. Uh, when will you get to campus full-time again? Um, to June, 8th June 8th is when I, I close on my house, house there. So um, we're, we're kind of in transition here. We're turning our house over June 1st. Um, and then June 8th, we'll, we'll be moving in and uh, moving forward. So we, we've got... I think dressers later in June and Mike and uh, Derek are working on, on their living arrangements. So things will, it's, it's kind of, we're all scattered and it feels um, a little like chaos to us right now. Um, but we're still doing a pretty good job. I think and once we get, get all locked and loaded there, I think we'll, we'll be ready to roll. I know family's always been very important to you, not just your personal family, but your extended family, the wrestlers and, and fellow coaches. Mm -hmm. Now that you've been together as a coaching staff, uh, at least periodically over the last several weeks, um, has, 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 it, has that family aspect set in yet? Um, yeah, to an extent. Um, I, I don't think so. Dresser's really the, the only one with a, with a family. Um, but. Mike and Derek and I are, are already kind of built in family because of our history that we have together. Right. And sure. We have definitely a great relationship there. And I think that that'll continue to grow as I get my family in town and, and those two maybe find their own families. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But I, as far as, uh, how the relationship, how everything's going, it, it's very good. It's as good as I could ask for. Um, very couple, very good, clear communication, uh, what's expected, what we need on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, we're working very well together. Who's been assigned the duty of brushing out Mike Zadick's beard? Uh, Mike Zadick brushes his own beard. And I put oil on it. And he <laughs> he blow dries it after every shower. I can't believe it. <laughs> oh, man. We've got to wait till your camera reestablishes. There it goes. All right. So that is not part of your duties at Iowa State. There will be no, no. beard brushing of Mike Zadick's beard. Um, but does recruiting training, development, uh, what will your role be at Iowa State? Oh, well, as a volunteer assistant, um, basically just in the room coaching, right? Um, when recruits come into town, you can you can have contact with them that way. Um, but my, my largest role will, will be in the room um, on an everyday basis, mornings, afternoons, midnight, whatever it takes, um, to help these guys build and get them to where they want to be. So training and development, that's... That's key. Like I said, I always go back to teacher. I always go back to coach and, uh, and what we've noticed most about you. Um, you know, I've, I've never had a chance to thank you for the career that, uh, that you've had that, I mean, it's been very entertaining and, uh, most everybody's loved it perhaps except your competitors, but, uh, you've ac absolutely been exemplary in your career as a competitor. I'm really looking forward to seeing the next few years as you continue your growth as a coach as well. Um, and your, that last stop you made before heading out to, to Colorado um, and, and entertaining the idea of the Iowa State job, how difficult mm -hmm. was that decision to, to, to truly you know, make and did you do it together as a family? Uh, we do everything as a family, so I think I probably start spearheading ideas, whether it be vacations or trips or jobs, right? Right. Um, and it, it's always through my wife. It's always through what how she feels about it, where she's at. She is and has always been 100% supportive of, of anything I do. Um, but I, she was certainly on board, uh, not right away, not the first minute, but maybe after the first week. Um and yeah, the biggest thing for me was I didn't want to just say no. So I went and went out and, and, and visited and, and met with, with dresser. And to me, I felt comfortable, you know, I was there. I felt comfortable. I, I could see myself there. Um, and that was the, the biggest, uh, clue or kickoff for me where I was like, all right, you know, um, regardless of where I've been, um, I can be here, you know, and, and I can be really excited about it. 
Um, so th- that that part of the decision wasn't all too hard. Um, definitely my wife, who's been lived in Iowa City for 31 years of her life, I'm sorry. Um, to her, at first, like I said, she was like, eh, I don't know. But she said she's visited. She's kind of come along, too. Um, she's very excited about the opportunity, about the new town, about a new place. Um, it's not going to be Colorado, but it'll be closer to her family, um, which – I'm sure she's going to be much more excited about. So, <laughs> Brad, it's always really good to talk to you. Uh, give hugs to Wyatt, Chase, and Cole for me, and your beautiful we'll wife as well, we'll brother. Do. It's always good to chat. Appreciate you joining me in the Nike hot seat today. Shout out to Mossy Oak as well. And uh, one day, <laughs> one day, I will actually get a Brent Metcalf Mossy Oak cap. What do you think about that? Yeah, I got to get some made then. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you get one with that's, that fits a large head, would you? Got a cyclone logo on it too. It'd be sweet, right? <laughs> Already. <laughs> Brent, have a great rest of your day, brother. Thanks for the time. You bet. See ya. For all of us to take down, I'm Scott Kessler. Thanks for watching.